We left off here on the last video. We just did a sphere and did this core shadow, which probably isn't the best term to use for, for this. Um, probably a better term is terminator, which is um, an astronomy term where it just indicates where a spherical object like a planet is where, where the light from the star st stops hitting the surface of the sphere. So core shadow kind of implies a gradation and reflected light. And in perspective drawing, we, we're really not dealing with that. It's either in light, it's in shadow. And so we did this little, um, the terminator here, this little ellipse, which is a great circle that is going to be when the, this is from when the sun is directly to the left of the viewer. And we put it at the sun at a 45 degree angle up into the sky. And this is where we left off. And I started looking at this diagram I, I made and was realizing how far apart I put this sphere and then this sphere. And here's this measuring point over here. Here's the cone of vision. And when I plotted out the cast shadow, it's far enough outside the cone of vision that it looks, it's distorted and it looks like it's going downhill. It, it kind of feels like the sun is not directly to the left of the viewer, but is in front of the viewer. So I really didn't want it to look like that. So I, um, here's the cone of vision right here. So you can see all the lines like yikes. It's just a bunch of lines. I, I plotted out the uh, terminator here just like I did on this one. So I'm, I changed this. I knew this was not gonna be like, I wasn't gonna be happy with this as in a sample. So I did another um, sphere, plotted out the terminator. And then this one has a much bigger cone of vision. Okay, so well, let's do the cast shadow of this one. So all you're doing really, like you could think of this as just a incline uh, circle, an uh, incline ellipse, an incline circle in perspective. So, it, and this whole thing is above the ground. Here's the ground down here. Uh, so anything that's above the ground, you're dropping flagpoles down to the ground, especially like curved objects. There is a, um, let's see, we'll use th this color. So here is where this circle touches the front side of this cube. And here's where it touches the back side of the cube. So if you just dropped a flagpole down to the ground, I mean, this would land right there on the ground. Here's your flagpole. And I made a, a square in perspective that's at a 45 degree angle, like just like we did in the last video. So I wanna take this square and drop it down to the ground. This one, I didn't really need to do that. This touches the front side of the box and way back here, this touches the back side of the box. So I could, from this one, I can also just drop a flagpole down to the ground and it touches this back line. But the others, like, well, this one would actually touch the center line, right? We can do these. We can do these four, which are easy because they are dropping down. This drops down to the center line. And then this one also like drops down to the center line. And then I get these four flagpoles which I could use just the four, but like better would be if I had eight flagpoles. Let's do an eight point shadow. So here's this, that diagonal line's kind of light. So it runs right through there, there's one there, there's one there, and there's one there. Here's my eight point ellipse. So I need to drop this down to 
do a diagonal line. But it's not the diagonal line for the bigger box. It's the diagonal line for this inclined um, square. So what I'm going to do is take this and drop this down to the ground. Right, so we take Here is this box, this square, this inclined 45 degree angle square. And I'm gonna just put all these lines in here. Probably not quite necessary to put all of them in, but it's a better sample if I put them all in. So with this down here is this inclined square drop down to the ground. So these first four flagpoles were easy. The next four are not that hard either, but I just need to draw a diagonal line here. So this, put another flagpole. This one drops down to the diagonal line. Right there is ground. Just need to know where ground is all of these flagpoles and this is where it gets kind of busy this one drops down to this diagonal line it's got these three one more okay so there's our eight flagpoles and then we do ground lines from the bottom of them um, I'm just going to start with this one in front and then I work my way around. I'm just going to do all the ground lines all at the same time. You could don't have to do them all at the same time. Ground line. Ground line. Here's a ground line for this one. I don't want this video to be too long, but there is probably the one of the more dense videos I have here. So those are all the ground lines. And we'll do the light angles from each of these flagpoles. Let's see if I'm going to keep consistent here. Start with this forward one. And there's the just put little dots, work my way around the circle. Just to be careful that I stop on the correct line. This guy's got a tangent line with these two light angles. Last one there. Okay, so that I have all these little points on the ground. And then if I had like a lifts guide is actually a really nice French curve or some kind of French curve to make these smoother so they're not just freehand, but I am just gonna freehand them in here to save some time. So here is my shadow of the sphere. This goes around the corner and behind the, the sphere, here's the silhouette line of the sphere. So the uh, shadows of any kind of curved lines, all you're doing ever is just finding points along the curve. And we could have done it with eight. We could have done it, I mean, we could have done it with four. We did it with eight. You can do it with even more than that if you want. And some, um, a lot, because this is so dense with lines, a lot of people just do this. They'll just draw their circle and then do their light angle and kind of, figure out where that 
end of their shadow is just so they get the length of this the shadow right and then they just kind of fake in a little ellipse on the ground for the shadow which is um and then they this is just kind of faked in most of the time but if you understand kind of the the way it works the technical side of things it gives you better ammunition to just kind of fake things in so i don't want to make this go too long because i've already made this video too long once and i now I'm, this is my second time around trying to make it shorter so there's a cast shadow of a sphere on a horizontal surface and i think we've covered all the shadows of we should, vertical lines, we did horizontal lines, we did angle lines, and we did curved lines, all shadows of on a horizontal surface with parallel light, light from a light source, a natural light source like the sun that is 90 degrees from where the viewer is looking. So we'll talk about shadows on vertical surfaces next.